Hey everyone, it's Connor here. Today I wanted to do a slightly different video based upon some questions that we got over on Twitter. So you'll see here that I'm showing a chart showing the Magnificent Seven total return performance year to date. The Magnificent Seven is a collective term to group Amazon, Apple, Google, Meta, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Tesla. They are having magnificent years in 2023, hence the name. And we're comparing them against the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, which is SPY, and the equal weight cousin of the SPY, which is RSP. So we shared some visuals for this chart over on Twitter, and many of you asked, how do we create that? So I want to show you how to do that today. Now, the way the Magnificent 7 line on the chart there is created is actually by using a model portfolio and using the collection of those companies as a benchmark. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If we jump into the model portfolio tool here for just a second, and I go to Magnificent 7, at the exception of creating this model portfolio, it will look something like this. You'll be able to add weightings for these stocks, pick a start date, initial value, a currency, um, and add some other data in there as well, such as advisor fees. We're not doing any of that. This is purely just a benchmark. We don't want to extract fees from it. So we set this up, and I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second. You would click Save Changes. And then you get all of this information. Obviously, you get the, the weightings and the pie chart and the performance. The performance is broken down a little bit more here in the performance chart where you can specify ranges like year to date, and you can compare it against the benchmark like the S&P, or you can also choose a custom benchmark such as another model portfolio. We also have historical returns here, breaking down those returns a bit more granularly. And then we have risk metrics here as well. So first, I'm going to show you how to construct a model like this, and then I'm going to show you how you can extract that and pull it over onto the charting tool. So here's a brand new Coifin account. It's never been used. We're one day into our seven day pro trial, which is what you need to use model portfolios. I'm going to jump into this tool and show you how to construct it. So we're going to create a brand new one. And here we're going to call it the Magnificent 7. I'm going to leave the currency as USD. The initial value I will leave as well. The benchmark we can leave as SPY for now. And the start date defaults to 2012. We can just leave it there for the purpose of this video. And we don't want advisor fees in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my tickers for the Magnificent 7, which includes Tesla and the rest of them. So here's all the components of the Magnificent 7 here. What I'm going to do now is go up, click this button here and equalize the weights. I'm just going to double check that I don't have any rebalancing. So you see here, rebalancing period monthly. If I left this on monthly, every month it's going to equalize those weights again. I don't want any rebalancing just for the purpose of this part of the video. I'm going to go ahead and create this portfolio and it's going to update all of those inputs. You see that the current weightings have changed because we don't have rebalancing periods. Here's the pie chart of how that would turn out. We've got the performance chart here as well and all the data that I showed you earlier. So this in practice is how you would make the model. For some of the things that we were showing you over on Twitter, we wanted to show you the 2022 returns or the year-to-date returns, for example. If I go ahead and change this to year-to-date returns, we can see the Magnificent 7 is up 135%. But at the start of the year, the weightings of the Magnificent 7 benchmark would have been kind of peculiar. NVIDIA would have been a good 30, 35% of that, which is now 50. Tesla would have been a big share. Microsoft, all of these companies' weightings would have been disproportionate to what we'd want. So I'm going to go back into the edit portfolio here, and I'm going to add a new allocation to rebalance these weightings at the beginning of 2023 so I can show what a balanced index or benchmark of these securities would do over the year. So click new allocation here, and I'm going to go over to the start of 2023. So now that I've selected that, I'm just going to ensure that these are equalized again, and I'm going to save those changes. And if you remember, it was 135% performance. When we go on the performance chart this time year to date, it's slightly less. It's 102, so there's less influence from NVIDIA being weighted so heavily. So this is kind of the setup that I would want. And if we wanted to show the returns for a specific period like 2022, for example, we can go in here and we can create a new allocation specifically for that year for the stocks to rebalance before 2022 rolls in. And we could rebalance them again in, in 2023 and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, moving on to how you can pull these models into charts, I'll explain how you can do that. So right now, there exists a feature. We like calling it a feature. It's also a bit of a bug in Coifin where you can pull these model portfolios into other areas of the platform. In the future, this is something we're building for right now. We plan to add model portfolios to watch lists, to charting, and other areas. But for now, in theory, they're not really supposed to be used throughout the platform. 
So what you'd have to do in this instance is create a second model portfolio. I've just went ahead and created a 50-50 portfolio here, nothing complicated. I'm gonna go into the edit portfolio here and I'm gonna choose a benchmark, but I'm gonna choose a custom benchmark, which is gonna be the Magnificent 7. And we'll see why I've done this in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and save those changes. And what that does is it just basically gives me the Magnificent 7 as a benchmark against this portfolio. So we can see that here. It's obviously doing way better than a 50-50 portfolio. But the feature slash bug that I'm alluding to here is if I go back to the summary page of this 50-50 portfolio, whenever you have a custom benchmark, that custom benchmark is going to be clickable like this. You'll see how it annotates when I, when I hover over it. And if I go ahead and click the Magnificent 7, it's actually going to pull it directly into a Coifin chart like this. And you'll see some things that don't quite add up. It's not really supposed to be in here. For example, I can't pick new data series. Whenever I delete one, I can't add it. And there'll be certain things that you can't do in here that you would expect to with a, a regular security. The way around that is to create a custom chart template. So if I want to show total returns, for example, I'm going to deselect Magnificent 7 here and just create this using a regular security. I'm going to just type in total return here. And you can do this for pretty much any metric. And I'm just going to change some of the formatting here quickly, make this orange, make it normal. Uh, change the date to year to date. So this is kind of what I want to see. And I'm going to save this as a template, call it total returns and spell it correctly. There we go. Save as new. Now this kind of gets around that problem of when we put the model portfolio into the chart, Quaithen says, I don't really know what to do here because it's not supposed to be in here. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So let's go back to model portfolios. Let's go to 50, 50. Let's click on the custom benchmark that we made and jump into the chart tool. Now we're back to where we were, but we have a saved template. So if this doesn't load on a template, you can obviously just change it to the one you've created. Um, I can't add anything to this, but I can edit it and change it. And this is kind of the view that we want. So now we have the Magnificent 7. We have it set up for year to date. At the beginning of 2023, this was an equally weighted benchmark, and this is the only period we're looking at, so it's totally fine. And I'm going to go ahead and add some more securities to it, like the QQQ, the SPY. I'm just going to group these axes as well and then the RSP, and there we have replicated that chart, and we can add custom labels to this as well. If I go into the settings, we can add those labels back on and, and change the formatting of the chart as well, like this. So that's how you'd recreate these charts in Coifin. Well, technically, it's a, a bit of a feature and a bug to drag those into the charting tool. This is something you're going to be able to do in Coifin pretty soon, but for now, there is a, there is a workaround, a handy little hack that you can do that yourself. For those interested, this is how you do it. I hope that helps. Um, as always, you can reach out to us on Coifin Charts at Twitter. You can email the help desk or you can reach out to any of us individually or drop a comment below. Thank you.